Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Can you brief about our I means our, our last discussion? What was that? What we have covered, you know. And if you haven't attended, then I had sent you know link in the group as well. Have you checked it? What was session about, guys? Yeah, it's about the uh, basics of accounting. Basics of accounting, right? Accounting. But all, can you brief yeah, that? Yeah, all golden rules that uh, actually cover. <coughs> okay. I need more details, means what was that? How golden rules works? What did you get out of that, you know, sessions and all? What was that? Brief, it means I'm looking, uh, I'm expecting you know, a little more insight from you guys. So that helped me to even understand what input that you have received from this session. Come on. Yeah, okay. I would like to uh, explain it a few now. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. This is for you guys. See, that will help, uh, you know, you also to correct your, uh, maybe, you know, the way you answer and all. So you can take this opportunity. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so it was basically related to the uh, accounting part and uh, it was more about the traditional accounting mm -hmm. that was uh, related to the uh, three golden rules uh, like real account, nominal account and personal account wherein uh, under the real account uh, you explain that uh, all the things which are coming into the business or coming into the fund would be debited and whatever goes out that would be credit. And uh, including that, um, it was explained that a real account basically represents the balance sheet. Mm. And uh, ultimately, balance sheet represents the current position of the business. Mm. So it was related to do, to that. And you actually mentioned some accounting entries for this, like for uh, if uh, you know uh, equity would be purchased then on cash, then what would be the accounting entry that would be purchased account to cash? So. Uh, it was related to this that all pending expenses, all pending incomes, all current investments only, these all needs to be you know recorded in the books of account, uh, sorry, book, uh, books of fund. That was all related to this. Um, plus to this, uh, you have also explained uh, if capital receipt would be there, then what would be the uh, accounting entry as uh, capital and cash? These you know both account changes proportion, uh, proportionately. So, what would be its impact? So, apart from this, uh, you have actually told us about all the asset transactions, what happens to them if they increases or if they, these are going to be purchased, then all asset transactions are going to be debited and uh, all other which are going to be sold out or uh, if assets gets decreased, then these assets all are going to be credited. And, uh, Similar applies to all liability transactions or capital transactions also, where if there is an increase, then all these liability transactions are going to be credited, like capital call, subscription, all tables, and if they're going to be decreased, like, you know, the like distribution, redemption, all table reviews like this, so these all are going to be debited. And uh, you uh, actually mentioned some, uh, you know, uh, accounting entries for this. Apart from these all asset transactions and liabilities, then you explain about the nominal account, where all the expenses or lo losses are going to be debited, and all incomes and gains goes to be uh, to be credited. Uh, basically, nominal account represents the income statement or PNL account. Yes. So entries goes on like this. Correct. Yeah. So uh, you have actually mentioned that if expenses increases. Then our net asset value gets decreases and vice versa. It goes like this only. Okay. And uh, yeah, you have also mentioned um, all the entries that are related to incomes or gains, expenses or losses. Um, post that, you have actually mentioned the personal account. Basically, this shows the credit purchase or credit sale. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you have mentioned if there is an entry, for example, uh, you know, fund purchases shares worth of 10,000, like from uh, on credit, then what would be the entry on this? Mm -hmm. 
which is uh, purchase account to the like payable account or the, the creditor's name that come, that can come there. Yeah. Um, so basically, personal account helps in managing the credit transactions, basically rec- or recording the credit business transactions. That is the work of personal account. Uh, at the end, we have mentioned how the you know fund accounting uh, processes, how the work goes on it. Like uh, like uh, the, if for example, there's a GMT fund, and there are investors. Investors, you know, uh, sends money to the bank account. The fund manager receives that, and with that, we have accountant, which need uh, who needs like bank statement or side letters. Uh, 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 side letters basically, you know. Uh, contains the information of cash so accounting needs these statement accountant needs this statement to do all the accounting entries like investment statement is also there so this way you know process of fund accounting revolves and on this basis we have to do different entries like capital call received and something like you know more so it was related to this session good you uh, yes means you know i would expect this kind of in detail i would say summary of sessions from everyone right or every time at least try to uh, means you try so it seems and even you know it feels trainer as well that you guys are uh, paying attention and you are also trying to understand each and everything all right mm-hmm. this would yeah. be our uh, another session on financial statements of a fund all right financial statement of a fund it means let's say your, your income statement of a fund or balance sheet or you can say uh, fund flow statement how fund flow statements or their components why we prepare fund flow statements and apart from of course partners capital that we prepare in private equity and apart from that partners capital we also produce need assets value a statement you know quarterly or yearly monthly biannually or maybe at the time of let's say uh, winding up the fund so that depends there would be different different scenarios but yes we do perform that we do prepare that so we'll see that on a uh, let's say ppt because last time <clears throat> we just cover that portion on board only but this time the same content we'll try to discuss in more a uh, formal way all right so this is basically outcome i would say in this session we are going to cover about income statement balance sheet cash flow statement nav statement and partners uh, you know a statement in p so because we prepare partners capital the reason is partnership uh, private equity is your partnership business all right so let's start why we are discussing first you know because anyways all the transactions you know whatever transactions that we record in the books of fund whatever means all including if i take the example let's say uh, <clears throat> if i take the example of let's say dividend maybe interest payment all right then all your expenses why we record this can anyone tell me why we record income why we record capital <coughs> why we record total distributions why we record because ultimate goal is to prepare income statement prepare balance sheets prepare fund flow statement prepare nav statement and finally partners statement so that you can you know send this report to the general partners or maybe uh, limited partners of a fund or depends on that fund structure or even regulatory bodies as well so now just you know think about it if you don't have a uh, let's say income statement in place balance sheet in place let's say you don't have that right even though cash or fund flow statement and nav statement now if i ask you can you please let me know what is the nav of your fund then you will have to let's say you have thousands of transactions which you have posted already in, in the books of fund you will have to aggregate the value of all that transaction and that becomes you know, a tedious job or difficult jobs to do so it's it won't it won't be easy it would be difficult to do all right and that's what your financial statements your financial statements help uh, you to understand that you know quickly that you can uh, <clears throat> 
compute income or you can quickly uh, calculate the net assets or availability of cash in your fund book or again that statements help you to understand your investments your investments position what investment you know value that you're holding or fund is holding in the books of fund and same for uh, partner statement as well partner statement basically that helps to understand each partners to know their percentage or their ownership contribution in the fund and apart from that partnership statement also helps each partners to understand their liabilities their total commitment percentage the total distributions amount that they have received so far from this particular partnership business and that's what whatever transaction that you recorded in the books of let's say fund ultimately purpose is to prepare income statement balance sheets and every statement cash flow statement partner statements and all but in fund accounting business you would see that your balance sheet prepare you know sorry a balance sheet play role like your nav statement and balance sheet and nav you know statement play role like your trial balance in fund business <clears throat> your balance sheets and nav statements that would be similar like each other right but on a specially nav statement if you ask me you can class wise just you know compute the nav and publish it to the investor fund number nav fund number nav in that way but in general way if you see if i ask you what is mean by you know nav computation or what do you understand about nav computation you would say total assets minus total liabilities right but total assets and total liabilities we record it on balance sheet only and that's what you would say nav statement that looks like your balance sheet as well but separate if you generate any nav uh, dissemination reports and all so that would be little different where you just publish the fund number and nav that's all all right and your balance it also you can you know relate with the trial balance as well in a fund business you don't need to prepare separate trial balance your trial balance would be your balance it only unaudited balance it so that becomes your trial balance and that's what all reports you know to understand a reports purpose and understand why we prepare it and how or what input input see in a first session only that we have discussed inputs and all every input that we have discussed and that's what i said this would be like little more formal way to see all right but yes ultimately why we record the data in the books of fund because ultimate goal is to formalize the data in a reporting formats as per let's say it can be ifrs or maybe gap and then you can publish that to the investors or government bodies okay so what if sir we don't publish it how will you calculate tax liabilities of course you won't be able to do it to understand or to know the tax liabilities you will have to prepare statements all the statements this gives you the insight of net income of a fund balance it helps you to understand total pending you know assets liabilities or holding details or investment details for all that input cash flow basically help you to understand how much you know net cash amount that you have net cash amount that you have your question would be like so what is if you don't prepare fund flow statement don't prepare it that's fine but how will you calculate that you know how much amount net amount which is pending in your bank account you won't be able to do it then see here we are not talking about 10000 rupees or maybe let's say 1 lakh rupees see fund size would be different 500 crore 2000 crore 10000 crore 20000 crore right so just think about it when you say you know 10000 20000 crore so it means there would be thousands or even lakhs or crores of transaction i would say in the books of fund and to reconcile that or to verify that it becomes very very difficult and that's what reporting plays crucial role but this reporting is based on your data data which you recorded in your system your different different teams if i talk about here income teams right your uh, <clears throat> fixed income teams or maybe income teams who are working on dividend or interest payment and even expense teams expense and income te teams basically they update your income statement means their data actually goes to the income statement expense and income team it can be fixed income team in your fund or it can be your dividend processing team or corporate action processing team 
So basically, once they book their you know transactions in the system, then ultimately that uh, system prepare the financial or let's say income statement for you so that you can verify with the transaction. If I talk about balance sheets, so your trade processing team once they update the transaction, let's say for swaps, derivatives, options, loan transactions, CLO, CDO, or any other transactions, once they process it, that input will goes to your balance sheets. Because balance sheet, fund plus statement, NAV statement, even partner statement. See, statements represent the aggregate value of a transactions. If you have purchased 10, you know, transactions, 10 transactions aggregate values, let's say this one, your balance it will represent the value of aggregate value of your 10 transactions. So this is how your you know statements help you to understand the business business, or I would say your funds position in which position your fund is and how your your fund let's say has been performed or how your funds you know performed in past or maybe even you can focus for future as well depends on the that information balance details or you may be NAV statement details or maybe your cash flow you know statement details and all and another important aspect of cash flow statement if you ask me if you don't have a cash flow statement then you won't be able to focus the cash you know availability in your books and without availability of a cash book, how will you raise, you know, capital call? Or maybe how will you grab the investment opportunities? Investment opportunities and all. To grab that opportunities, you should have a cash flow, active cash flow statement in place, which can help you to understand the available cash. Or you can say dry powder. In private equity, we'll use word like dry powder. Dry powder is nothing but cash which is available in your books so which you can or readily cash available that you can say which is available in your books that you can immediately invest it okay now your question would be like so why cash you know readily cash uh, we should have it or why that cash is required now if i let's say give example let's say tata technology tata technology now has launched the uh, ipo right but if you see just go back, you know, uh, maybe in the month of August or July, they have already announced that notification where Tata Technology will list their securities on stock exchange. So that's the opportunity, guys. Private equity funds will target companies like, you know, Tata Tech. They'll invest because within a six month, this particular security, Tata Tech technolo Technology shares already was uh, trading into the, you know, unlisted market or OTC market. So if let's let's assume it if you don't if you have a cash in place of course you would have purchased Tata Tech securities because within a six months of time span you had opportunity to earn maybe 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent depends Tata technology is a sound organization so you might see shares will list on premium and if you have a cash if you if you have a cash let's say positive cash flows then immediately you can invest without issuing capital calls or you know, scheduling meeting with investors or to ask them to process funds and all it's a lengthy process but if you have a cash in place then you can immediately invest that amount to generate more returns to your investors and that's what cash flow statement is very important apart from that cash flow also cash flow statement also helps you to manage your expenses as well if your cash flow is negative then how will you manage your total payables right how will you repay that liabilities and if you don't pay that ultimately your business or your fund or even if you take this example at your personal level as well let's say you have a credit card obligation let's say you have a home loan or personal loan obligation and suddenly let's say company fired you how will you mitigate that risk because you don't have a positive cash flow or saving in your bank account then you suddenly you would be in trouble all right same logic you can apply it in a fund business as well and that's what statements are very important so that gives you the in detail insight about your funds. But to prepare that in a statements, the data is important. Data, it means the transaction, whatever buy, sell expenses, income, corporate actions or investment transactions, whatever transactions that you would see, all transactions are very important. That will have to record first. And that's what go back and check it. If you're a working professional, what we do it on Geneva. What we do it on Investron, we record the transaction for equity, bonds, debentures, swaps or different different financial products. Why we record it? 
to generate the reports. Right? So we record the transactions in systems like Geneva or maybe Investron, Aladdin, there are a number of applications, each and every organization they have their uh, you know, uh, inside or their own applications as well. Home applications that you can say platforms where they can record all the transactions. But the point here is, <clears throat> the main point is to, if you want to prepare financial statements, then your data is important and data it means transactions and that transactions we record first. And then after your, uh, the statements come into picture because once you update your data with in, in few applications, what I have seen like those applications provide, if you see, once you record the data, so that data which will be linked with your journal entries, journal entries linked with, uh, linked would be your trial balance and trial balance directly compute all of this information. So how? Because whenever we record the data, if you see as per the modern accounting approach, there are different accounts, capital account, expense, income, or uh, you can say <clears throat> investment and liabilities. So these are the accounts, right? When you process the data, Let's say your process buy trade. Buy it means directly your system will categorize as an investment and system will prepare your accounting entry. If your system is let's say automated, then system will create journal entry under assets and ultimately that will update it to the trial balance. So it means you balance it side, balance it asset side automatically. And your job would be like to just generate that, you know, statement, let's say balance it. So you can generate that and cross verify with the data which you have posted by trade quantity amount price so total of quantity into price so that projection it will be posted on balances that you can verify so this is how your accounting works and that's why your data transaction to reporting is you know important don't worry about it so we have uh, lots of things to discuss all right so i'll take you ahead to see what we have. <clears throat> All right, here. So the first statement that we're going to discuss about your income statement. Income statement. When we say income statement, it means here we are going to discuss about the funds income. Just think about it. You have invested in equity or GMT fund, let's say. GMT fund invested in equity bonds CLOs money market GMT fund invested in equity bond CLO and money market now if I ask you in this context, let's say if equity investment offers something, what would be that? Or maybe bond or CL or money market offers something to you, what would be that? Of course, equity market offer dividend. All right. Even gain as well. Gain on equity means you would see appreciation in value of your equity. Bond market that offer interest payment and accretion as well. Accretion basically it's like again capital gain that offers it. CLO and money market both the offers accretion as well as interest payment if that loans or CLOs are tradable but interest payment that by default you would see. And here if you talk about income statement so we are talking about all your dividends, interest payment, then your gain as well if you see any gain or loss we are talking about that and that needs to be recorded on your income statement or in your income statement all right and if i ask you like what is mean by income statements so you should say income statement it means income statements represent the uh, aggregate values of 
income related transactions like you know dividend interest payment income or expense related transactions like you know dividend interest payment a uh, capital uh, capital gain or if you see any gain as such so that gain also you know it should be uh, recorded on the income statement and apart from the expenses like management fees uh, admin fees legal fees or any expenses if you see that needs to be recorded on your income statement and incomes or uh, income statement basically helps us to understand the net profit or net loss in the business or in the fund all right so that's why your income statements come into picture and now if you see dividends who recorded equity who recorded of course trade processing team recorded dividend which team records it your income processing team records it bonds your fixed income teams they take care of it clos bank debt team come into picture money market so you might see otc or money market team where they take care of all the transactions but ultimately they process the transactions for or to prepare the income statement because we want the balances aggregate values of each and every you know transactions and that's what we record the transactions if you uh, record any incorrect transaction let's say in equity or maybe let's say if you record any dividend transaction incorrect tr transaction in the books of fund that will affect on your income statement and ultimately uh, you know it it's a basic logic when you have a profit then we update that you know uh, in balance it even though if you have a loss we also update that loss in your balance it as well and that will affect on the total assets value whatever value that you have <clears throat> all right so all this data is important now here we have discussed about what is income statement and why we prepare income statement apart from that we'll see the components as well what are the components of the income statement component it means in the first session if you see we have discussed that your dividends or interest payments uh, management fees admin fees gains unrealized gains or realized gains so that we record on your income statement all credit side would be your gains and all your debit side that we record all the expenses and losses to the income statements of a fund those are the components which we record basically and importance as we have already discussed importance it means without income statements you do, we won't be able to you know calculate the net profit and if you let's say if you are not able to calculate it means ultimately that will affect on your balance sheets then how will you calculate the net asset position or net cash position of your business then uh, fund then right so that's what each and every you know aspect is very important in this business it seems like that maybe let's say you are working on fixed income transaction let, let's say maybe that you know balance sheet or maybe income statement is not directly you know that you you guys are dealing with it that doesn't mean it will not affect it will affect you are not directly dealing with financial statement that is a different story or you are not dealing with directly any calculation that is different story but your data goes to you know final outcome is financial statements that's what we record it all right if you don't record it see if you don't prepare financial statements i'll tell you the implications as well if you miss the deadline of financial statements or let's say tax filing then uh, regulator will start charging penalties to you for per day basis second your fund license it will cancel basically uh, funds they don't you know charge or pay any taxes and all because investor paid that is required means all statements are required even investors as well to see their total assets or total liabilities or expenses and all so accordingly they can uh, communicate with their ca or tax consultants so that they can file tax uh, uh, and pay the taxes to the governments on time that's what all these you know uh, statements are very important all right <coughs> then another one is balance it so in this uh, session we'll also talk about balance it but yes there are two things already we have discussed what uh, in the first session why i'm giving the reference of first session because there are uh, two people which are new to this session that's what i'm giving the reference of previous session as well 
So we have discussed about balance it uh, and the uh, components and everything. But in this session also we are going to touch to it in a more formal way. All right. So uh, what is balance sheets? That you know it. Balance it represent the uh, liability assets and capital movement or present situation of capital assets and even liabilities whatever that you have also balance it's help you to understand cash availability as well all right along with your total assets total liabilities and even capital balance it will help you to understand your cash position as well what cash amount that you have and uh, what are the again parts if you ask me parts it means your capital business uh, fund capital fund or business whatever it is capital plus liabilities and your assets <coughs> so what it means let's say you have a capital of 1000 and total total liability you have which is 200 so that would be minus your net balance would be 800 so it will tie with your assets so you cannot say directly like capital is equal to assets if you calculate in this way then you will have to minus your liabilities ultimately to understand net assets and in a Fund accounting business also we calculate the net assets value of a fund. How much value that you will see in the books of fund that you will calculate with the help of balance sheet only. And if you don't have a balance sheet in place, again, it would be difficult to compute net assets value of a fund. And if you ask me like what are the components, components it means capital, uh, liability and assets that comes under your component. So it means you can categorize all your expenses income and everything whatever that you have under this three accounts only <clears throat> and if you are not able to categorize under this three categories then directly your PL come into picture or income statement come into picture by the way in fund business you can call it income statement would be your PL profit and loss account statement so in interview you might see that you know what is what are the uh, what is the difference between income statement and PL so both are same both are not different in normal business we actually compute uh, or calculate the expenses and let's say income through your profit and loss account or profit and loss statement and in fund business same your PL would be your income statement so it means we compute all the expenses losses gains and everything on your income statement all right and again, why balance it is important. So balance it's provide you the insight on um, your total assets, funds, total assets, total liabilities and total <coughs> capital position as well. So how much capital that you have received from each partners. All right. And finally, fund flow statement. What is fund flow statement? Here see. Fund flow statement is very uh, essential to prepare in private equity or even hedge fund business or I would say in any, any business that gives you the information of uh, how much cash that you have received in your business or fund and how much cash let's say which has been out from your business. I'll just give one or two examples to relate with this. For example, if I say capital call, capital call of course cash will in but if i say distributions cash will out in mutual fund business your redemption would be your distribution you know sorry <clears throat> in mutual fund and hedge fund you will see wording like distrib uh, redemptions redemptions of units redemptions and in private equity distributions both are same terms Capital call you can relate with subscriptions. Subscriptions. So if you see here, 
cash in and cash out let's say you have received capital call worth of rupees this much and you have distributed amount of this much so your net cash flow would be 9000 so it means this amount you can of course if you have any investment opportunity as such you can take the investment decisions you can utilize this amount for investment and that's why your <coughs> cash flow statement is important if you don't have a let's say a cash flow statement then you will not be able to compute the net cash position of your business your PL and your balance it's help you to prepare your cash flow statement or I would say only even on the basis of balance it also you can prepare your cash flow statement but eventually you don't need to prepare it from scratch your system actually that prepares everything for you your main job would be to perform reconciliations in fund accounting also i would say not even in fund accounting but going any process 60 to 70 percent job would be re recon right perform the reconciliations verify the transactions verify the data resolve the discrepancies and generate the final reports by approving the certain exceptions and once you are, let's say, approved or uh, that generated statements, then you can share that statement with others. That's all. Nobody will ask you to uh, build the financial models or maybe build the financial statements from the scratch and develop it because you're going to join in an organization where they have already, you know, they have started their accounting, fund accountings and all way back in, let's say, maybe 2000. 20, 15, 16, that depends. Hardly you would see when you have a new funds on board. In that case, you might be, they'll ask you to generate it from scratch, but you will not see much of transaction. Last week only, uh, we got few, you know, funds. Those are very new. One is uh, private equity fund. Another one was in a private equity only. There was a master fund and feeder. So it was new one. So I have requested the uh, admin team to set up that funds and system. So once they set up, then I'll <coughs> check that everything in the Geneva system, whether that, you know, just, uh, that all the reports and accounts and everything, uh, which is mapped with that funds number or not. If not, then I'll map it. And after the mapping, of course, once you fit or update the data system will prepare everything, including your uh, cash flow statements and all. So then your main job would be to reconcile, perform the uh, verification or reconciliations between your transactions whatever transactions let's say been recorded and the final statement or output if you see any discrepancy as such then of course as i said your main job would be to perform reconciliations or verify and then match it off or maybe <coughs> approve it and you can provide highlights as well with the exception details and all so this is how your job come into picture but yes, cash statements provide the insight on net positions. Another example that I would like to give it here, investment. Once you invest, what happened? Let's say buy the securities. Of course, cash will out. But when you sell it, cash in. Then expenses paid. Cash out. <coughs> income receive cash in so it means now if I ask you what will be the sections or components of your income or let's say sorry uh, fund flow or cash flow statement so if you see one is capital or investing part you can say second one is investment part third one is your operating part right Due to operations, you would see change in the cash position. Due to, let's say, investment activities, you would see change in the your <coughs> cash position. And due to your capital activities or you can say your in investing or financing activities, you would see change in your that fund position or system. And that's what your fund flow statements help you to understand that change as well. Alright, because each and every change that you need to track it out and update to the uh, 
uh, cash flow statement or fund flow statement once you update that then fund flow statement will help you to calculate the net cash flow if the cash flow is negative so it means you need a more capital and that's what your capital call come into picture where fund manager initiate the capital call if fund manager has any negative cash position or negative let's say cash flows in place if the fund manager has let's say negative cash then how will you receive your salary just think about it and that's what fund flow statement come into picture if the cash flow is negative then fund manager will have a two options so it means cash flow also help you to take the investment decisions as well if you have a negative cash then fund manager will initiate a capital call and even ask accountant to hold any distributions if you see around it hold back for some time or until further notice and third thing fund manager can quickly try to invest uh, sorry or sell out some portion of investment to release cash or maybe to you know to have enough liquidity or to cash in place so that's how your cash flow will directly impact on your investing investing or fund management decisions as well so now you think about it if you don't have a cash flow in place and you have a thousands or lakhs of you know transaction in place how will you calculate the net cash or net cash availability of your business let's say there are thousands of transactions which are payable let's say there are thousands of transactions which are receivable how will you calculate it it would be time consuming and that's what see this cash flow statement will give you quick quick insight or information or input to take the further course of action or decision and that's what your statement is important as well as components wise as i said investing financing and operating or operations that would be a components of fund flow statement and <clears throat> why the statement is important to take investment decisions or to even initiate capital call or to even make the investment payment or maybe expenses payments and all so that your cash flow statements help you to take all that you know decisions and actions that's why your cash flow statement is crucial in your fund accounting and every package or fund accounting business i'll take you ahead nav statement what is nav statement as i said nav statement you can relate with your balance sheet as well now your question would be like so how can you say this if i ask you to compute nav your answer would be like sir total assets minus total liabilities <coughs> divided by number of outstanding units in mutual fund or hedge fund because in private equity we don't divide with the units we don't even calculate or compute any way for per unit as well your calculation would be very plain total assets minus total liabilities what your net would be your total net assets then what we record under balance sheet then we do the same thing total assets total liabilities minus your if you have capital something or we don't even consider capital for that matter anyways but total assets minus total liabilities and also we record capital then what we are different things recording to the nav statement or to compute the nav then same thing and that's what initially i told nav statement it means your balance sheet so it means to compute nav you required balance it helps to prepare and that's what we prepare unaudited trial balance trial balance it means it's it's your balance it actually in fund business so we prepare that to get the net assets value of a fund and if you see question around it like what is nav statement nav statement it means uh, the statements which represent aggregate value of total assets like total investment in different financial instruments for example let's say equity bonds debentures Uh, swaps or maybe any you know loan syndication credit uh, transactions if you see so we aggregate the total assets value including even apart from this investment uh, we also need to consider the prepaid expenses if the fund paid anything as such 
then uh, total capital calls receivable total receivables from the broker total dividend receivables total interest payment receivables then if you see any uh, depreciation in the assets value or maybe appreciation in the assets value that also need to record in the you know asset sides and apart from that cash movement need cash uh, after the deduction of all that you know transaction details and all so we need all this information to compute total assets what about liabilities liabilities it means what uh, what are the let's say <clears throat> the expenses where fund needs to make a payment or maybe let's say what are the different distributions fund needs to initiate or process the payments to the investors it's a computation of that like total total payables of expenses total payables of distributions total payables of any uh, internal you know transactions payable or any short term borrowing or loans if you see anything as such that needs to be recorded under total liabilities or that needs to be i would say like compute as a liabilities and here if you see uh, if you ask me to compute then nav then total assets as i said earlier total assets minus total liabilities if i calculate and prepare one report so that becomes my nav statement apart from that we also prepare the nav dissemination report as well dissemination report let's say basically total assets you have 10000 total liabilities you have 1000 your net assets would be 9000 so you can prepare report like this let's say you have a gmt fund gmt fund with nav nav of 9000 you can prepare such a reports for each and every funds if you have 10 funds then you will have to prepare for 10 funds if you have 100 funds then you will have to prepare for 100 funds then prepare it and publish it out to the investor so that becomes your nav dissemination report nav disseminate it means to publish that nav to the investors all right <clears throat> and why nav statement is important see nav statement is important for uh investors even government bodies stakeholders and even investors like let's say your investor and you, you are looking for investment in xyz fund that nav nav history or nav statement only help you to understand how your fund let's say performed in last 10 years or maybe in last 2 years maybe in last 1 years so on the basis of that you can take the investment decisions apart from that same nav statement it will helps investors to understand their you know investments progress or investment value let's say you have invested uh, when the nav was 5000 you invested when the fund nav was 5000 but now nav is 9000 See this. You have almost ninety percent gain in your uh, that fund investment, and this is how it will also means help investors to understand the exact picture or position of their investment value also. And that's what an NAV statement is important. And if you ask me, what are the sections or uh, parts that you would see on your nav statements as i said total assets it's a computation of total assets and total liabilities and if you have any let's say number of units <clears throat> that you can pull it from the transfer agency reports or maybe you can pull it from the custodians reports if you have anything as such in a hedge fund and mutual fund we compute nav on the basis of means units as well but in private equity we don't create any units It's just a plain calculation: total assets minus total liabilities. Net amount would be your total NAV value. And if you ask me, the components for a private equity components would be your total assets, total liabilities, <clears throat> and also we update the capitals and distribution details as well. All right. So we'll see that. So it means in the uh, we'll have a dedicated sessions for each one. so we'll see in that sessions as well in details so any any questions so far guys come on if you have any questions you can raise <coughs> or we are good yeah i should have one question mm -hmm. uh, 
you said like uh, man is nothing but total assessment, total liability, right? Hmm. So as on that day when we prepared now, hmm. so actually it is actually zero, right? I mean total assessment, total liability generally is zero, right? If the balance sheet is correct, hmm. and how we know the now I didn't get that. Sorry, what what is your question? Yeah, total assets minus total liabilities always be zero, right? Yes. If, yeah, so the NAV will be zero then. No. How it will be now so, will be zero. How you uh, now means yeah yeah now we calculate as total assets minus total liability in priority, right? Hmm. Total assets liability. If I believe you are uh, considering capital also as a liability. Uh, yes, yes. Totally. You cannot uh, consider yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. In a balance sheet, what happen? I'll tell you. Balance sheets, or you can see even an AV calculation process. This is your, let's say, balance sheets. <clears throat> you have received capital call. Capital call. Capital call, it means it's a liability now. Capital account, right? You have a capital call. Okay. Under assets, you have received capital call. It means you will record cash here, right? Let's say you have received capital call. Capital call. You have received capital call for let's say fifty thousand, all right. So you can record the same under assets as well. Why? Because when you received capital call, it means you will receive cash to the fund. Cash receipt. And your accounting entry, even the cash account debit to capital account, and that's mm -hmm. what you need to record capital under capital book and cash under assets book because cash is the part of your assets. So here, okay. let's see. I recorded this one. Now, if I ask you to compute NAV, of course, your NAV would be only fifty thousand. Why? Because now you haven't even invested and you don't have even paid any expenses as well. And that's what. So, so generally, capital, the capital value. Whatever capital that you have, still you can see the capital balances as it is available in your bank account. In this case, your NAV would be 50,000. Okay. Let's say later on, later on it means after one week, <coughs> you have incurred some legal fees expenses. Legal fees, you have paid it. The fees is around, let's say 5,000. Then don't you think that you should also try to update your means you should update your cash balance as well, right? Yes. Your updated okay. balance should be forty-five thousand, right? Yes, no. Yes, yes. Yeah. And where you record this legal fees? Of course, to the PNL. Or maybe yeah. income statement. But in short, you can directly record it here as well. Let's say legal fees. Legal fees minus, sorry, 5,000. <clears> Here also you can just, if you don't want to adjust your cash, you can add the minus sign. But if you adjust your cash, basically you should adjust your cash only. And even if you see the accounting entry for a legal fee speed, the entry would be like expense account debit to cash. When you record cash to the credit, it means already cash which has been out from your bank account. You can go and check it. Right. Once you are confirmed with this, then you will have to update your asset side as well as your capital side as well. But this time, when you update this expenses, you know. When you update these expenses like this, so this is becomes your liability. And now if I ask you to compute your NAV, NAV would be around total assets you have 
total assets 45,000 or even if you take cash which is 50,000 50,000 total assets minus your total liability of 5,000 so that would be around 45,000 so you need assets any we updated any would be this okay got it yeah you cannot consider capital as your liability because capital you are going to utilize to purchase or acquire assets and ultimately here you cannot ultimately what we are doing I'll tell you we are actually computing the you know capital's value your capital's value is based on your assets if you see difference between capital invested capital and assets if you see positive difference then that becomes your gain or appreciation if you see negative difference so it means it would be a loss or maybe depreciation in the assets value that you need to record it to the balance sheets to tie both the accounts because here anyways we are going to compare only capital what is the, what is the you know position or situation of my capital let's say i have invested 50000 now if i check it what would be the value of that capital but eventually that capital's value is based on invested in that assets whatever assets that you are holding okay. and when you check it then you got to know okay so when we have acquired this then we have realized that so few expenses also incurred like legal fees there's that xyz things and that will actually affects on your assets value okay and that you know expenses or transactions then you should record it to the record it as a liability which you have paid it or maybe you are going to pay it or you will pay it whatever it is and after deduction of that you can compute your need assets value but you cannot add capital or your liability both the things combine and you cannot see like yeah, okay so in all the cases you would see like assets is equal to your liabilities that actually we want that why we want it because capital is your mark investment and assets become your market investment and here that you will have to compare the mark investment with your market investment and whatever difference that you would see the difference you need to adjust it to bring your capital to the market value if you don't add let's say there is a gain of 1 lakh on 50,000 investment you had invested in penny stock that value has been multiplied and now you are going to record that if you don't record that then how will you calculate it of course you won't be able to even calculate how much gain that you have and that's what we we expect both the records it should tie okay. if you have a gain then of course you can appreciate you can add to the capital and we ramp up it because your asset side is high and if you have let's say assets uh, assets value which has been depreciated then same difference we also minus it or deduct from the capital value why because it's assumption is now we invested 50,000 but we don't see that you know 50,000 as a value in the portfolio which has been depreciated yeah all right yeah. <clears throat> but it was a good question actually so this might help to other people as well to understand so you cannot say like your accountant you cannot say like your uh, assets and it would be like equal only and there won't be any impacts and all. Yeah. <coughs> and what is partners partnership capital? Because in a private equity business, you would see structure of uh, you know general partners and limited partners. You would see structures of general partners and limited partners. LP basically that would be your uh, investors, people like us who want to invest in private equity funds and when we say GP, GP it likes promoters of the fund. 
in short if you are not able to understand it i'll again explain if i take the example of let's say tcs company you would see board members would be at top they'll uh, appoint ceo chief executive officer to manage in you know, a business operations and they'll also raise capital from public as well right so board of directors play role as a promoter because they have promoted tcs board of director they have also raised capital from public and if you see public plus board of directors they actually appoint ceo chief executive officer to manage their business operations in private equity business also you would see same structure limited partners play role as a public general partners play role as a board of directors and both can see some that have sometime you would see if the business structure is you know small then general partners can play role as a fund manager as well but uh, in some cases let's say your fund is very big then they can appoint fund manager separately private equity fund manager same logic you can apply it in mutual fund as well as in hedge fund as well it's not necessary that in all cases where general partner will play role as a fund manager no so it means general partner which is fund promoter plus limited partners which is fund investors basically both invest even though if you see board of director also invest in tcs company tcs board of directors they are holding around 41% or something you know stake in entire tcs groups and rest holdings <clears throat> the people like us they have invested it including mutual funds and hedge funds same logic you can apply it here as well general partners also sometime invest around 20% and limited partners also invest around 80% but which is not a mandate but in india it's a mandate sebi or uh, the government of india they doesn't allow to the private equity investors where only that limited partners they are investing but the general partners they are not so that model only you would see in us uk and other countries but in india which is mandate we cannot directly uh, ask investors to only pay 100% and then only will manage investment that structure which is not allowed <coughs> all right so uh here if you see general partners and limited partners if the fund is small then they can general partner can work as a fund manager and they you know manage all that investment activities like buying and selling of securities or to uh, find a good investment or potential investment opportunities and invest so they take care of it but if i talk about limited partners they don't actively participate in any of the activities again if you are not able to understand then again try to understand the role of public in tcs company let's say you are holding tcs securities did you participate in any of the active meetings daily meetings like how to manage productions how to manage clients and all i'm sure no so it means you are a passive investor same logic you can apply guys are you able to hear me <coughs> yes yes one more candidate saying no it's not my problem then so if you see in a pub, you know in a public limited companies you would see indirect intervention indirect intervention of public like they they'll just you know vote uh, maybe cast vote on certain occasions like in annual general meeting or maybe company want to announce any corporate actions and all in that case only you would see the role of public but in the other hand if you see in a public private you know private equity firm limited partners they play role as a public only because they are investors they invest they invest up to 80% 90% so depends so maybe 100% also sometime they invest and they participate in the uh, <clears throat> participate in the funds you know investment decisions and all so where a fund manager actually schedule this oting or schedule a conference call or maybe call and discuss with all the partners about their investment strategies and all but my point here is here general partners and fund managers it can be same in certain cases or i would say different as well if the fund manager and general partners both are different then fund managers take care of 
all that uh, actively you know investing parts and all general partners support to the fund managers to take investment decisions and invest limited partners provide funding to the general partners and general partners can appoint fund managers to invest or maybe sometime limited partners and general partners come together and they appoint fund managers you might see different different you know structures it is a uh, it is a customized business so that was you would see customized uh, you know structure as well with every fund you would see different story and that's what your uh, partners you know partnership capital statement come into picture general partners and limited <coughs> partners both work as a partners and you need to prepare that or their statement including their contribution distribution it means return of capital how much capital that you have paid to the uh, each partners their total profit their total loss their total unrealized gain and unrealized loss that all you need to record it on their statement we have a practical examples as well so don't worry about it but yes so that's why your partners capital structure come into picture the reason is here one partners that we treat as a all limited uh, partners or investors who have invested that we treat them as a limited partners and when we treat them as a limited partners it means both general partners and limited partners come together and they form llp limited liability partnership as per the lpa limited partnership agreement they form that llp once they form that llp then they transfer it means partners sign the commitment and transfer capital to the fund business and that's what your partnership capital statement come into picture once they transfer capital to the fund business then you will have to prepare as a accountant you will have to prepare partners capital or partners capital or partners capital book you need to prepare to ensure that you have recorded each partners contribution their expenses income or investment you know unrealized gain and losses everything on their statements only and that statement you will have to share with each investors on a periodic basis now your question would be like why sir we need to share that let's say you have invested uh, in xyz fund and that is also in partnership let's say you have invested in 10 years back and even till today also that nobody share that partners capital statement with you then how will you compute your individual you know investments contra uh, that value or how will you let's say calculate expenses how much expenses that you need to pay to the partnership business or how will you even calculate how much amount that you have contributed or going to contribute to the partnership business i'm sure that would be difficult to take the decisions or to compute the value of your investment and partnership capital is also important for financial uh, sorry not financials but individual i would say individual financial plannings and tax plannings as well because each partners uh, is eligible for a tax payment to the government but they refer the, their capital statements or partners capital statements while uh, filing tax uh, you know tax filing or paying taxes to the government and that's what your partnership capital plays crucial role and if you are let's say private equity accountant so or if you want to become a private equity accountant you will have to work on partners capital also depends on the your accounting cycle it could be your daily it could be uh, monthly it could be yearly depends on that accounting cycle you will have to generate or prepare partners capital and share with across all the investors for that particular fund with the approval of fund manager that's why your partnership capital come into picture now if you ask me so what about accounting package accounting package it means it starts from data entry <clears throat> then journal entries to record the journal verify the data prepare the journal entries then prepare the income statement balance sheets and then compute the nav or nav statement that you can say and then finally you can prepare your partnership capital and then you can share that with the investors you finally you know partnership statement is based on your uh, transaction and even i would say balance sheets and pnl as well because part before preparation of partnership what you required you required capital you required distributions 
you required p down details p down means basically basically your <coughs> value let's say you have written to the investors right that details then withdrawal also if you see anything as such and management fees and gain or loss the details you required to compute partnership or to uh, update the partnership capital and if you even ask me like what would be the section in capital statement one is for capital distribution pay down your management fees and finally other expenses also you might see that and gain and loss if you see gain that you need to add if you see loss that you need to debit and whatever net would be so net capital that you can update or net value or any way that you can update so yes those would be the component of your nav statement any question guys if not questions i'll take you ahead then <coughs> uh, shivra just want to confirm one thing hmm. uh in the previous slide like we had discussed something about partnership capital statement and you told something about limited partners agreement hmm. so i believe like whatever we are updating in partnership capital statement is as per the limited partners agreement yes lp limited partnership agreement okay because you so, know every every you know uh, information that you would see or each and every uh, input that you would see on lp agreement as well if let's say any information is not provided in lpa then you should have at least side letter side letter it means additional supplement or document which provide you uh, the detail information about the maybe let's say transaction or uh, maybe profit or loss you know allocation or recording of expenses and xyz partners and all you should have something in place and it should be again approved by fund manager and even limited partners or investors also So we will be going to discuss more on this like limited partners agreement. I believe this is just a starting yes, part. Yes, so, yes, yes. It was yeah. just a starting part. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. So when we when we say you know income statement, income statement referred to as a profit and loss account statement as well. But we have already discussed about it, right, in details. And again, income statement uh, represent the profitability or components that affects the profitability of your fund income statement which represent the components that affect the profitability of your fund it can be expenses it can be uh, let's say component it means already we have discussed but i'll again brief about it let's say admin fees or loss on investment let's say uh, you recorded accruals for interest payment but <clears throat> unfortunately that issuer company announced default on payment right so that all components which will affect on your profitability of uh, that fund and if you see any negative impact on pnl so it means that will directly affect on the net assets value of a fund if you see positive impact on your pnl so let's say profit has been increased so it means definitely you would see positive change or appreciation in the value of total assets of the fund all right <coughs> sorry pnl it assist you understand what you are earning so it means basically this pnl is for the, it will give you insight about how much revenue or how much you know profit that you have generated for your fund and what expense you are let's say consuming at a different levels of the fund or business that you can relate even that also pnl or income statement basically help you to understand that also and here also we calculate gross profit after subtract your cost to carry out the service or investment whatever that you have of course that you can 
uh, this is basically a trade you know trading account that you can say but now we don't prepare trading account and uh, pnl separately in a traditional accounting methods we used to prepare trading book as well right to record the purchase transactions sales transactions and their difference would be either profit and gross profit and loss but nowadays we don't prepare it now your question would be like so why we don't prepare it actually a broker statement you know a broker statement we refer as a trading book and broker statement provide you insight about your gross profit and that's what we open trading book uh, or trading account with broker we open trading book with broker and we access and then again start buying and selling of securities so that's what you don't need to create your separate trading account you can of course maintain that if you want in your geneva or internal accounting system but which is not again required but from accounting perspective that now we are most in income statement only all right <clears throat> net income the profit remaining after the subtracting out all expenses and other income and expenses from gross profit and apart from to get the you know net income so in a fund business we add uh, losses sorry whatever losses that you have uh, we add it then even gains also if you see anything as such we also add that gains as well there are two types see we have two different approaches one is balance sheet approach and another one is pnl approach balance sheet it means if you want to record let's say unrealized gain on investment if you want to record it to the pnl you can record it but anyways we are going to update balance it as well after the uh, income statement or pnl instead routing transaction like from balance it to income and then income to again capital why don't you directly if you see gain or losses on investment directly you can add it under capital instead posting it to the pnl you would see that approach as well in a fund business 90% in a funds they follow the method where they directly update unrealized gain and losses to the liabilities and then that's what sometime if you see if you try to read their balance it you might get confused okay so it means they have directly posted unrealized gain and losses to the capital account but that's the accounting approach and that's what they updated so now you tell me let's say you have a loss of 1000 let's say if i take the depreciation what we uh, what approach we follow in depreciation <clears throat> we record the total assets value we record the total assets value let's say you have assets first assets we record it to the balance sides let's say asset value is 10000 you have a depreciation it means reduction in value let's say uh, 1000 so net assets balance should be updated that you can see 9000 but what about this depreciation of course that depreciation you need to update it to the pnl pnl debit side then update it to the pnl debit side your pnl debit side balance should be 1000 now but let's say you don't have any other item on pnl apart from this you know uh 1000 then of course this is becomes your net loss net loss net loss of 1000 and that that net loss you can transfer it to the capital account and again capital account which we record it under balance sheets only let's say your initial capital was 10000 so depreciation you need to record it 1000 and your net asset should be 10 if you want to follow this approach you can do it if not then don't record it to the pnl that's fine directly record it to the balance sheets only anyways we are ultimately going to record it to the balance sheets so why don't you record it to the balance sheets reduce the assets of 1000 and same 1000 you know rupees transaction you can add it under capital and your any anyway calculation is done i mean this is the one approach you can see and another one is directly then record it to the pnl and then route all that need balances to the capital account this is the another approach if you follow <clears throat> so it means if you record it anything to the capital account so that becomes your balance sheets approach balance sheets approach in other way around this approach 
sometime you might see plex like, as someone is ca from the other side and that person is taking your interview so you might see that that person can ask you are you aware about bottom line approach your balance sheet approach become your bottom line approach because balance sheet we prepare at the end that's what it becomes bottom line approach and if you follow the pnl approach so that becomes your top line approach so it means first you can add transactions to compute your net profit if you consider that projection means depreciations and all to compute net profit or net loss here instead if you follow the let's say pnl approach instead depreciation you will have to add wording like net loss not depreciation so that's what you would see change in wording as well now your question would be like so which one is best top line or bottom line if you want to calculate net loss by considering all of this then of course top line approach is better but if you want to do it quicker to reduce the number of transactions and time and efforts everything then bottom line is best you can quickly record it update your balance sheet and your job is done so this is how you might see sometime you know new terms in your interview process also so don't get confused <coughs> all right so sections we have already discussed but again i'll just quickly brief about as i said it would be like more in a formal way i'll just quickly discuss about uh, when we say sections of income statement it means it represent the returns generated from the investment made by the fund such as dividends interest and capital gain that we recorded basically revenue we recorded to the credit side credit side of income statement earnings earnings in the context of private equity fund this could be management fees or performance fees charged to the investor but this is other way around uh, fund manager or fund equity firm they you know calculate management fees as income but this will be like again expense to the limited partnership if you are booking expenses in the uh, fund so that becomes your actually expenses what happened having network issue not connecting okay thank you you check it guys are you facing any issue yes i'm not audible because no. two people they have raised concern like they are not able to connect and one is network issue check it from your side because i have a network uh, well network and everything <coughs> right so expenses management fees or any other expenses if you see that of course we recorded to the debit side of lp debit side of lp it means income statement and gross profit basically gross profit for a fund may not be as straight forward as it in traditional you know businesses in this case it could be represent the total fees earned from the manage managing the fund but this context is again uh, other way around here we have considered it from the in uh, that private equity fund house perspective who have launched that funds and all for them this becomes income but eventually <coughs> total total uh, this transaction revenue minus you know uh, expenses if you see management fees or incentive fees audit fees admin fees and all so that net would be your including your losses and all uh, that would be your total net income that basically will update it on income statement <clears throat> operating expenses operating expenses includes various cost it can be of accounting fees administrative expenses all right these are not directly tied to the investment made but are necessary for the funds now here you may expect question around it uh, when we say admin or administrative expenses that becomes your non tradable accruals non noted down non tradable accruals accruals category if you see any expenses let's say accounting fees is payable or legal fees is payable or maybe let's say admin expenses which are payable so that you can means in other way around will call it as a non tradable expenses because these are not directly linked with the trading 
and if you see trade related expenses like broker fees broker commission broker uh, any other, you know consulting fees if you see anything as such so that becomes your tradable expenses or tradable accruals accruals it means expenses which are due to make a payment let's say tuition fees for example you haven't paid it right so it means tuition fees is due now so that becomes accrual for you if you see any accrual expenses as such so that you can treat as a even liability also but here the point is administrative expenses or accounting expenses if you see any due expenses as such so that becomes your non tradable expenses so basically operating expenses you can call it as a non tradable expenses or non tradable accruals as well because those are not directly linked with the trading activity and if you see any expenses which are directly linked with the trading so by default that becomes your tradable accruals then net operating income <clears throat> gross profit minus operating expenses this shows the profitability of the fund before considering other source of income or expenses then other income also that you can again consider represent the additional source of income not directly related to the fund's core operations this could include interest earned on idle cash or fees from advisory services sometime fund also provide advice or general partner or maybe other they can also provide consulting uh, you know to the someone else and then they can generate the revenue but apart from that sometime what happen let's say we have received liquid cash from the investor let's say one cr right and for next 30 days we don't have any investment plan as such we have only kept that fund in bank account so even though if you kept that fund in bank account bank will pay the interest payment to you so that becomes your idle income which are not directly related to the <clears throat> let's say any investment as such but still that you can treat as other income and you will record it in the income statement all right other expenses include cost not directly related to the funds core operations like legal settlement or fines those are not related with the operations but still you will have to record it sometime happen that in a fund or uh, not follow the due diligence in the reporting then regulator will penalize it let's say <clears throat> few expenses that you might see uh, someone file a case against that private equity fund right legal case or suit against the private equity funds then they will have to bear some fines as well or expenses as such so that also expenses you need to record it to the income statement then what about net other income other income it means other income minus other expenses if you have any other expenses or other incomes you can just offset with each other and this shows the net impact of non core operational activities on the funds income and you can take it net value as well sometime you directly offset it expenses with each other let's say you have other expenses of uh, let's assume that you have fine of 2000 and ex uh, expenses which you have let's say 4000 you can directly take only 2000 as other income because 2000 you can offset this one with 4000 net expenses you can record it to the pnl or if you want to record it both you can record it expenses always be recorded to the debit side income always be recorded to the credit side of income statement or pnl and then finally net income net income operating income plus net other income so it means here you can consider both the activities you know income means net income of this plus other operating you know income and finally this is the you know final profitability figure for the private equity funds so of course you can consider net operating income income it means after deduction of expenses you can consider that here also we have deducted expenses and in the operating expenses case also you can deduct the expenses net amount you can calculate it net operating plus net non operating just plus it out that becomes your net income net income that you can transfer it to the balance sheet so this is how your income statement which we prepare <coughs> example which we have in this example if you see 
let's let's take the example revenue we have 10 million then earnings 2 million management and performance fees but this is from a fund perspective so let's take the other uh, other way around right so this 2 million management fees and performance fees become expenses for a fund actually because fund make a payment right revenue we have 10 million gross profit would be around 12 10 million plus 2 and then operating expenses, legal fees, administrative cost, net income, 2 million, other income. I'll take the other example in uh, Excel. We have it. Not this one. Because this example is from the general partners perspective. There are two things. Limited partners and general partners. General partners, they would be able to see this calculation in their books. Not limited partners. From a limited partners perspective, this uh, management fees or performance fees become the expenses, not the revenue. Right. they will not be able to earn through this general partners of course general partners or maybe fund managers they can uh, this incentive fees or management fees would be income for them even the returns from the investments they might be considered you know portion of uh, their capital appreciation as a revenue right and if you take if you take or discuss this example from the general partners you know side this is absolutely correct or maybe fund manager perspective but from a limited partners perspective, which is not, we'll discuss that in our next session. We have it prepared. Let me just quickly see if we have any. was that income statement so we don't have it anyways so it means at the moment but yeah so we'll cover that in in the next session or maybe next to next session or when we have a discussion then we'll cover that in details as well because this example which is from a limited partners perspective so that might create confusion so I'll avoid to discuss at the moment They have added fees, management fees in the earning. All right. We cannot add that. Even performance fees also we cannot add it. If you are preparing partnership, because anyways, partners make a payment, management fees and performance fees. And how can you say this? So this is from a general partner's perspective. <clears throat> Any question on income statement? Why we prepare income statement? We have already discussed, understand the true nature of what is being generated in your fund in terms of profit and expenses income statement summarize the funds revenue expenses and profitability or even additional income and expenses if you see as such all right so any 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 question around income statement now all your nominal accounts rules you can apply to the income statement debit expenses and losses credit income and gains even though while preparing accounting entries, you can apply the same rule. Whatever expenses that you would see in transaction, you can directly debit at them. Whatever incomes or gain that you would see, you can directly credit at them. For example, dividend. Cash account debit to dividend account credit. Dividend where we record it? P&L's credit side. All right. Any, any question guys, otherwise I'll take a pause here and then for today, I believe we should uh, stop because it will like heavy downloads for you then after the two weeks of gap. <clears throat> now you can unmute and you, you can ask your questions or doubt if you have any as such. Uh, from my side, I things look speaking as of now. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. 
when kids are early and maybe they manage it in how can how can that be a uh, early are we talking about uh, as a fun that's what that's what i said if, if, you, if, you, if you remember that's what i said i if you see the previous example i said we can't discuss this at the moment this is from a general partners perspective because general partners receive this management fees and performance fees so they can treat that as a earning but if we talk about investors or the limited partners perspective of course that management fees and performance fees, uh, fees would be their expenses so we'll have a another example so maybe in next session or maybe we have a dedicated sessions as well so we'll discuss that right in details this example is from a, your <clears throat> general partners or fund managers perspective basically fund received it the so other way around and that's what i said i'll not uh, discuss this example because it will create a confusion management fees would be your expense even though your performance fees would be your expense or you can say uh, liability if you are an investor because you will pay that to the fund but fund can if fund prepare it then of course fund can treat that as a income or revenue as well so there are two aspect and even though in a um, fund can treat that management fees and performance fees fund fund can add it in earnings which is fair and that can be even you know directly then fund can make a a uh, fund will have two options one that fund can offset it management fees versus other expenses so it means in this case if you see fund can offset management fees with this expenses as well this is the one option or else fund can separately record it like this earning separately and that separately <clears throat> anyways investor also they are paying to it uh, to the funds it means fund will treat that as earnings but eventually if you think from a investor perspective then oh, that would be like you know expenses all right expenses that means investor they have paid it from their pocket so that earning becomes expenses for an investor fund and investor both are two different things let me just clarify it we perform accounting at fund level investor level and even financial product level as well like equity <coughs> bonds loans debentures we we perform accounting at all different levels if you take this example from a you know investor level perspective it would be like exactly in opposite way if you take it from a fund level perspective of course so it means investor make a payment of uh, management fees and performance fees to the fund only who pay the uh, that uh, fees investor make a payment then investor make a payment to whom of course to the fund then this would be the funds earning them all right gross profit to uh, <coughs> this 10 million plus 2 million operating expenses let's see we have other operating expenses like administrative costs legal fees fund manager salaries rent or any other you know if you see expenses xyz including let's say fund account and salaries and all so that you can debit it so from gross profit you can debit your operating expenses operating after uh, after operating expenses if you see 12 million minus 4 million so that becomes 8 million that becomes a net operating income if you have any other income interest on cash you can of course add that in net operating income plus other income let's say other expenses also you have it legal settlement fees so it means net other income you have which is 0.5 million or 5 lakhs dollar all right and net income if you calculate 8.5 million plus sorry 8.5 million including your net other income plus net operating income eight this one here you might see little bit confusion but as i said i'll discuss those examples in my another sessions in a different way so that you can relate but this is not even completely you know wrong 
there are aspect to aspect if you think from a fund perspective if stand that's fund and if you think of course you would relate everything if you sit at let's say investor book and if you think from their perspective let's say as an investor uh, i'm paying it expenses and everything so how can i consider that as earning so from their perspective it would be little different all right and in this example the net income of 8 million represent the overall profitability of the private equity fund considering both core operational activities and other source of income or expenses from a fund perspective but at investor level you would see different case or different scenario <coughs> any other question guys or we are good if you don't have any questions then further part we'll discuss in our next session tomorrow we'll connect at same time and we'll discuss who are looking or preparing for a fund accounting interview so i'll add this document in course as well so you can just go through it once again to see you can read this you would see lot of questions around it if i add accounting entries to this let's say in a discussion that becomes your 100% interview preparation in a fund accounting will work on all this statements indirectly we work directly we work sometime and we prepare even accounting entries along with the financial products if you work on financial products and as well as fund accounting entries and let's say even the statements then ultimately you are ready for a private equity or even hedge fund or accounting interview i would say we have lot of things but in one session i cannot cover everything even right we have uh, obligations as well any other questions or we are good to close then prasad anurag anurag any questions yeah no nothing nothing i feel a problem and then i come with it okay so so we will be session to you arushi there is a pretty much clear currently no doubt sir thank you okay srikant any question no oh, nothing for me sir all right then we'll see you tomorrow at same time we'll continue with our this uh, means with the same discussion and we'll cover this portion so that we can jump on the your fund accounting flow and then different different there are number of things you know <coughs> We'll test to that portion. Then. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.